Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for Sight Lap as we look ahead to the Nashville, Tennessee Supercross this weekend. Uh, I'm David Pingree. I'm your host in things today. Uh, Bruce Murata not not available to join us, so um, that's fine. We'll see him next time. But we got Jason Lawrence back. I know we had a lot of requests to see more of you, Jay Law. So thanks for joining us again, man. <laughs> cool. Uh, we must give the people what we want here at Whiskey Throttle. I like yeah. that. Well, and I'm really bummed your name is back to Jason Lawrence. I was really feeling the Anita <laughs> bong hit. I've got more of them. I was thinking I didn't want to ham it up too hard, but there's a ton of those type of names. <laughs> I love it, dude. All right, let's get into what we got here this weekend. Uh, our sponsors want to hit them real quick. Rock and Turf. If you guys need some artificial grass, hit up at Rock and Turf. And uh, they also make really cool mats. I'm going to start posting some of these as he gets them finished. But they're perfect for, like, changing on, just throw them in your gear bag, put them outside your rig, whatever. Maxis.com, truck and mountain bike tires. They got the really the best stuff, man, in mountain biking. And their truck line is awesome, too. Speedstrap.com, tie downs, toe straps. Everybody needs them. Go check those guys out. They're a rad company. All right, let's hit our Maxis tires weather report. 47% chance of rain on Friday which I, it doesn't seem too gnarly to me. Ooh. I think, I think maybe that's uh that might even be good. Get a little moisture in the, in the track Saturday, 65 degrees and cloudy. So as of right now, looking good for Saturday, that's actually pretty good racing conditions. Um, let's start with the speed straps, two fifty preview here in this class. I, this is like maybe the most exciting race for me all year, Jason, because We've got guys now on the on the West. Kitchen's got a 15-point lead on RJ Hampshire, 26-point lead on Smith. So really, it's just RJ's the only one with even an outside shot at this thing, I think. Now anything can happen. I guess I should not say that. He Jordan Smith still has a, a mathematical chance, but it would take a catastrophic race by Kitchen to get him back in it. Now, here's the thing that I like. Uh, on, the, on the east, you got McAdoo, four up on Vial, 13 up on Deegan, 15 up on Pierce Brown. So it's really a McAdoo-Vial fight with Deegan kind of being that guy that's just outside looking in. But at this race, man, you, you also, when you start factoring in the Joe Shimodas, the, the Nate Thrashers, who is, is my pick for like a sleeper this weekend because he's from Tennessee. He might have all his local family there. Some guys thrive in that situation some guys buckle but i think he's a guy to at least keep an eye on because he's already won a race the dude's capable of doing it uh he's just had a rough year with some crashes and inconsistencies but between the 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 east coast fight with mcadoo and vial only four points is nothing deegan's still in there if he can get a win mcadoo and vial get kind of shuffled in with some of those west coast riders dude it's it's anybody's game on both coasts so this to me is going to be the best freaking 250 race of the year, I think. I think it will be without a doubt. I mean, when I was making my picks right here for how I think the main event's going to go, I was like, well, man, it would almost be cutting it short not to predict how you think the heat races are going to go, you know, because those are main events. Those are main events for those guys, you know. So I think RJ will win the West heat race and McAdoo will win the East heat race. But I think that McAdoo, a lot of the reason why he'll do that is because the dude's blinding fast and we know it, but there's not that much pressure in that situation. And I don't think, I don't know, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure and a lot of extra variables like you're talking about in this race. And I think for RJ, I, I mean, I love how he rides with his heart on his sleeve, but I think you're either going to see RJ come in here, win the heat race, win the main event, or maybe the, um, I'll say a bad saying, you know, like go down, crash trying or whatever it is. So I think RJ is going to win both of these races for real. I think he's going to win the main event because if he doesn't, then that's maybe, maybe a nail in the coffin almost. And I love RJ and I know he's going to go for it. So I think RJ could win the main event. I see Hayden Deegan second place because I don't think anybody on the East coast is going to beat Hayden Deegan ever again for the rest of this year. Ever again, who knows? But Race? Well, let me go back to the results. I put Levi Kitchen in third. So RJ, Hayden, and Levi. That's five points for RJ right there. Jeez, man, if he does that two more times, he about ties up the title for the last race, right? Isn't he like 15 points out? It, it is, and that's, so that's a, what I'm predicting yeah. right there. I think with Hayden Deegan, he's – yeah, well, Hayden Deegan, he's in his title aspect. Dude, I kind of messed up last week, and I even had to tell him. 
I thought I had to do the championship, but then I watched the post race conference. Everybody has a tip. Sorry, dude. Just don't strike me as that tough of a dude. I thought that was a lie. I think that's like laying the groundwork for an excuse because I think he might be like really nervous. And as far as Hayden Deegan and Vialgo, three more races. And I don't think that Tom can beat Hayden in a race seriously anymore. I don't really think it's happening the way he taunted him in that press conference about the whoops. So there's three races, nine points. He's going to beat Vial. I think McAdoo really is going to start to realize, dang, I got to hold it together and pressure's going to mount for that dude. So I don't know. I don't see him coming out and buckling because I think he's going to, he's not going to be slow. He's going to be fast as hell and broken leg or not. I mean, I think he's fast enough to race with Hayden in a no pressure situation. You get to the main event. I don't see it happening. I think Hayden's going to do good and it's going to be a big plus for these guys to have everyone else up in the mix. Cause I even continued going and I said, Joe Shimoda in fourth, Tom B. Allen fifth and Cam in sixth. And then you said, dang, Thrasher. You're like, man, he's a sleeper pick. Well, dang, definitely a sleeper pick. I don't even think about him, you know? So he could definitely win. There's a ton of guys, dude. Guys need to make the most of this, I think. It's crazy. This is the night to to shine, right? If you are if you have any title hopes or you want to hang on to your lead, man, if you're Kitchen or McAdoo and you can win this and then, you know, shuffle your opponent back to third, fourth, fifth, I mean – what a, what a nice way to kind of set yourself up to close it out and vice versa though those guys struggle it's going to let guys right back in starts are going to be huge um and it's funny dude i picked my top three pick was rj deegan and thrasher so we're thinking a lot of the same on that upfront stuff because i yeah. think rj is going to send it he's either going to well, win hey, or you trash. say the starts will be big what about Mitch with the Mitch bikes are just like hooking up dude on the start or maybe maybe levi's lying but he really sold me on the fact that, dude, that buddy hooks up off the start and it works exactly for how he wants to start. And he gets blinding starts. Dude, if he's going to get a blinding start, I'm not putting a penny down saying he's going to mess up because, dude, he's got the skill. I think this is the opportunity where you need to put him in a bad spot. You know, like you need to put him back in the middle of that pack, whether that means – trying to gate next to him or whatever. You know, I mean, I don't know if you could shut him down, but you can't be putting it back out in front like he's done the past few races. That's been his, probably his strongest point all year is his starts. He's just, he nails them. He gets himself up front, top two or three, and like, you know what I mean? He's solid. So they're going to need to get him shuffled back a bit early. Yeah. Um, and I also, like I said, Pierce Brown, still in this. He could be a, a problem for these guys. Same with Joe Shimoda. There's there's riders who are still capable of getting on that box that want to prove themselves before the season's out. Some of them have no title hopes, right? Like Joe. So he's just like, I'm going in to win, you know? And um, I think, I think we just have kind of the makings yeah. for a really cool uh, overall thing. The notes I have is a uh, big potential for point swing. Obviously we talked about that. And then also one last thing to kind of throw in, You've done these east-west shootouts or showdowns or whatever they used to call them and call them now, but there's a little bit of uh, pride that they goes into this. They used to call them the Dave Coombs Senior East-West 125 Memorial Shootout. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Shout out to Big Dave. Uh, they were awesome. But uh, there's always a little bit of that of who's better, east or west, right? And so uh, how much will that will play into it, right? If, if, if Kitchen and McAdoo are up front, you don't think they want to – Show Mitch, like, who's the who's the best dude? I mean, I don't know. You tell me your opinion. But to me, there's always com competition amongst team members, amongst East and West. And now you've got teammates from both coasts coming together. They want to they wanna flex. Dude, there's always those layers to it. And now there's even more with it. Now that you add into the fact that Mitch is on this big drought of no titles, you got two riders primed up in positions to get him the title. One of them's been riding for Mitch for, what, five years now. Mitch is never going to clip him. Not that he should, but they are obviously, like, you know McAdoo wants to produce for Mitch. You see he has a lot of pride for him and respect for what he's done for him. Levi, probably the same thing, but, dude, he just came into a team this year. If I'm McAdoo, 
I'm wanting this championship. Like, I want to look at the schedule and make sure I can clinch mine first. You know, let alone the fact that, dude, I really don't want to not win mine and have not and have by Levi throwing out the door. So, I think, dude, a lot of pressure for Mac. All that said, dude, if he deals with it, then good job because he seems just oblivious to it right now that he doesn't even know why he had arm pump. But Hayden Deacon didn't have arm pump because, I mean, he's like built for that. Kids crazy. Yeah. Well, and it's funny too, like, you know, talk a little bit about this, Jason. Like, there, it's like what you said about Jet on the, on interviews and on the podium. He's always just like real cool and casual. And oh, what, what are the points? Oh, I didn't even know. But inside, I don't care what anybody says or how they act or how McAdoo's like, I'm just so happy to be here. He's sweating it. Like when this starts getting down to the end and it's going to be a close fight. Yeah. You're nervous, dude. You're freaking nervous. I don't care who you are. Dude, I mean, I watched Jet in the practice because I watched the practice back again. And Cooper Webb, the only time he does that triple before the finish, it just so happens to be a lap that Jet got out of his way and he was on a, a roller lap. And Jet just broke his neck by watching Coop hit that triple. And you could tell it's like, dude, he's so worried about what the guy is doing. Like, he came to a full stop on the track to watch Cooper. And I'm thinking, like, in my day, when you stopped on the track, you lost your fastest lap time. Yeah. You stopped on the track twice, you know, and, like, you got your whole time deleted. I don't know. I think it's crazy. Like, he jumps the, the Red Cross. Not a big brain move right there. I mean, just things like that. It's just like inexperience a little bit. And I'm not even hating on him. Dude already has more experience than I do. But it's like I look at Jet and I watch videos, dude, of like the main event when he was behind Eli. And there's – I could pull a 90-second clip where there's three times he lands on the tough blocks. And it's like you don't see this on the broadcast. But, dude, it, it's getting shaky for him. And I think it's going to play into it that he, he's been riding at the top what I mean is at the top of the field, like at the front of the pack, 90% of the time, if he's not just out there trail riding, he don't really have much time to have the experience that it takes to go up against a dude like Coop or any of these top three guys who've spent years and years like grinding with that, you know? Yeah. Different thing. Like I, I even know riders in my time that like just weren't that good at like the stuff game. If you could get them to play it with you just because they never did that. And it was a different thing. If you could get them out of their element, then that would really benefit you. And putting Jet anywhere but first place is out of his element. You can't ride that fast in, in the back. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, let's look at that 450 class. Here's our Rock and Turf 450 preview. Uh, Jet and Cooper Webb both tied with 261 points. Sexton 15 back, Tomac 30 back. So... Tomac's like a real long shot, but I like we talked about last week, Sexton's still in this, and uh, he's going to need to come alive right now and start reeling off some wins and, and you know, let those two fight over their points and get wrapped up in their own battle and just keep knocking off wins if he wants to be in this. Um, so here, here's what I kind of had in my notes for this class is I want to watch real closely, like you felt like you just point it out again you're, you're watching jed and kind of the behavior of the two does webb start kind of messing with him a little bit more saying stuff to him whatever you know he's pretty damn good at that does jet feel that pressure and start to keep letting it affect him or i don't think i've ever seen him as somber and serious after a race as he was last week he was very very disappointed with how that went so i'm sure they went home and buckled down hard and like kind of refocused and uh, to me this is a really big weekend for jet to to either show that hey i can rise to this and all of this cooper web nonsense i'm going to put a stop to it or does the pressure continue to get to him and does web continue to get the best of him uh this is crunch time man you got to deliver and last week when web had to full shot leads every lap ties the points there's no way the pressure is not going to get to him. That doesn't mean there's no way he's not going to be able to pull through it and win the championship, but do the pressure is going to get to him. Pressure is already there. And I think with, with Jet, I'm going to just point out one thing that's a little gossipy right here. But Daniel Blair pointed out that ever since Jet Lawrence came out with he has a girlfriend, he ain't won a oh. race. Oh. I don't 
don't know what that means. But hey, who knows what that is? Maybe Johnny has changed a little bit. But you know, we spoke about the message with Johnny O before it was like, hey, stop the bleeding. Now Jet had that chaotic race last weekend, but he stopped the bleeding, dude. And he stopped it like maybe he had one more pulse before he was gonna not be leading the championship anymore, but he stopped it. So now it's like it's like a four race shootout. If they can get the dude back in the right mindset, which I don't know what that is, Johnny O might know. He's got a four race shootout too to go against Coop. And I mean, in his head, he did the three race thing at SMX last year. He probably thinks he has this still, if they get him in the right mindset. But what I'm thinking is they changed it to, now he needed to stop the bleeding. I bet you that right now they're telling him, hey, that wasn't as bad as as you're taking it, but now we need a win. And we don't necessarily need a win, but we need to be on the podium and we have to finish in front of the blue goose. Yeah. Now, how's he gonna do that? Because that's a whole new situation for him, just being at the end of a championship and still having someone on his on his tail. So that's like a whole new level of pressure. And I'm wondering how's he gonna react to that? So it kind of goes back to where I'm saying he don't have that much experience mixing it up. You know, like for me, if they're in like Ryan Bohoto to play stuff tit for tat with me, there's a chance I could beat him. You know, so that's what I would try to do. But if he tries to get in Webb's, Webb's like lane here and he tries to come on the offensive, dude, I think it's going to backfire for him. I think he needs to just do starts because that's not his zone. You know what I mean? It's like he needs to just get out front and focus on not letting anybody mess with him and being patient as he can, I would say, because they need to force him into a mistake. Otherwise, he's probably not going to make it. And the head games are only going to play so much, but the head games will definitely have an effect on the start. You know, like once you start a race, you do a lap. So, dude, you're so zoned in. You're you don't know what Coop said to you on the on the starting line anymore. But when you're on the gate, yeah, you might not be able to lock in, or it might change something. I think that's where that stuff already played a big effect. The mind games, or the fact that Jet couldn't get the fastest lap time, and that Coop rubs it in on the podium, and he revs his bike at him, and he like thumbs up some after the heat race. I love that type of crap. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was. I think there was more to that than just like, "Hey, good race, buddy." Um, I, yeah. uh, I I think that Jet's the fastest guy. The question will be, can he block this pressure out, execute on the start, and then just you know control the race? Because I think if he's top five off the start, I think he can beat these guys. If 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 he rides the it way he knows on how who's in to, front of him. I don't think it does, dude. I mean, I don't think it does. Uh, on a track that where they have, let, let's say they got a real set of whoops where you got to skim, there isn't mud or like all these other mm-hmm. factors. Jet's got these guys in speed, and so in, in, my, well, in my in my way, I look. He at definitely it, has this track in his favor. This yeah, track right so. here is like a lot more roll speed will work with them. The last track, when I saw it, I thought, dang, that's a Cooper Webb track. And I expected it to run up. It didn't really run up that bad, but still that layout, how you can like snip the corners and stay real tight. Cooper Webb excels at that stuff. Like Jet now, when you have a lot of turns, but he's going to go around to two or three more miles an hour faster than everybody. It's like roll speed, and you can't really do it. That's why I was, I was happy that Coop was able to get a good result on that track because that track actually last weekend ended up being pretty good for jet the way there wasn't a lot of ruts he's one of the only guys you saw when they came across that wall jump and took the right it's like he's the only guy who has the correct color lenses to see where the shiny spots are you know you're like why don't everybody go there but he's the only guy who finds that Anderson after the finish line and this do that i know i heard what you said about the weather and that actually sounds like it'll be great for the track because it's so hard packed naturally that it's not hard. And that moisture will be good. The cloud cover will keep the wetness in there. And I don't know. I have another thing that I think is important. And that's that let's talk about like allies or we'll call them friends and foes. Okay. So who could be a potential foe or a, you know, a little problem thorn in the side to jet here coming down to the tip? I wrote down around. obviously Cooper Webb. Obviously, Chase Sexton because they're they're his contenders for the title. 
Maybe Justin Cooper because he didn't like that shit about the dog. Maybe Kenny Roxon really didn't dig that baby gift. Hombre might not have liked it when you fucking grabbed him by the helmet. And Tomac probably doesn't like being called the old beast. So I don't know, dude. Now, potential allies for him? Uh, Hunter. Hunter Lawrence. <laughs> He'll be an ally for him. Um, Justin Starling. He'll be an ally for him. And number 14. He'll be an ally, but he's injured. Right. Dang. Bad time to be Jet. That's a really good point, man. And I hadn't really thought about that. He's kind of made a lot of, I, would, I don't want to say enemies, but foes. Like people who are not going to make it easy for him. Yeah. Right? Exactly. That's a good point. And that's what it is. And when we talk about this, we're not talking about like, I know a lot of people took it wrong when I was talking about will Justin Cooper or Eli Tomac play for Webb. We're not talking about guys pulling over and waving you by it's just the simple fact that if they ride you this much softer that is a huge advantage you know what i mean in the same sense if they're like riding you this much harder that's a big disadvantage and i think with jet the big thing of that is he's going to get in his head and he's going to try to like now he has six guys i just named six guys who are probably the six best guys on the track that he's going to have a little issue with every guy or think he has to handle them differently where that sucks that he's built that up because before i don't know i'm not really talking crap but he kind of asked for each of those no it's a great points and i think this is stuff that you learn um in the early part of your career like even if you are so pissed off with somebody go back to the truck take a breath because as soon as you make him an enemy like jason anderson I don't care what happens afterwards. Jason's got it in the back of his head. Like I'm going to race that guy a little bit harder when he tries to come by me. You know what I mean? And he's done that with a handful of people. Yes, exactly, and I, I think exactly. he's making it harder on himself. Um, all right. So speaking of the track, you also put out a really cool track uh, walk, kind of walk around where you talk about each section and how it might break down. That's coming out. It's out already. So if you guys haven't seen that, go check J Law's video out. It's on our YouTube channel, and um, yeah, it's pretty good, man. I like that. We we needed somebody that actually. Let's has touch some... on the track a tiny bit, though. I wanted yeah, to talk about ahead. these things on the on the track walk. But like, let's say this track, it has people might think this is weird, but all right, this is a right-handed track. It's what it is when I see it. it's a right-handed track. It has a left-hand first turn. It's a right-handed track. It has, what, eight right-hand turns, two left-hand turns. Okay, I like going left. Would you say you even have a preference? I for sure like to go left. Though. I have a big preference. Okay, so now this makes for way better racing, too, because when you make the lefts, you can square up. Very hard to square up a super tough bowl turn without being able to use your back brake to initiate it, I think. Then the right-hand turns, you see, like, those clumsy takeouts where a guy like oofs in there and then he falls over the other guy falls on top of him because he can't get the brakes goofy i hate the right-handed tracks but this is a fucking right-handed track if i've ever seen one dude and then i think the section before the finish is is ideal because when there's no obstacle before the finish it's like you get like a seattle situation where the leader can come in he can hug the tough blocks and roll across the finish line. Lame. Like, we hate that. You know, like, that's the worst finish you can have. Well, when you put an obstacle before the finish, like they had at Tampa last year when it was the Thrasher and Hunter Lawrence battling to the last turn, now that totally changes it. This track is going to be epic for this. And I'm, I'm hoping, dude, that we see one of these last turn, like, because it's there, last turn for the win. Because you have to go outside to clear the obstacle. So if you got to protect the inside, you end up like a photo finish nine out of 10 times at the finish line. I'd love to see something like that. And furthermore, why I put Chase Sexton in first place, Cooper Webb in third place, is because that's five points. I'm going to put Chase Sexton because he told me that he is all in and that he's still going for it. And then he also mentioned, not to me, but he said he won four out of the six last year after the break so he needs to put those four down right here but i'm gonna give him the first three i might change my opinion but i'm gonna say he's gonna win three of these damn things 
and he's going to be one point out of Cooper Webb, and there'll be three guys able to win this championship at the last race, like 2006. This is going to be like the greatest championship ever is how I'm planning it out. Oh, man, I hope so you're right. if you guys right. are gambling, if you think this is gambling advice, you might want to take Jet for this race. I'm going with my heart right here because I, unfortunately, was in the semi after my race in 06 and missed that race. Mm. Well, I've got Jet, Sexton, and Webb uh, for my top three. Uh, again, like this could it could be any combination of that, I think. Uh, you never know. Tomac could show up, too. Um, he hasn't the last couple rounds, really, but you never know, man, with him. So um, it's good stuff. I want to thank our, our sponsors again here one more time. Rock and Turf, big thank you to those guys. Check them out on Instagram at Rock and Turf. Maxis.com, get over there for any truck and mountain bike tires you, you need. And Speedstrap.com, check those guys out. Really cool. Tie downs and toe straps. Everybody needs to have tie downs and a toe strap in case you get a truck or a bike stuck. Uh, or broken down way out there. Those guys uh, make rad stuff to get you back. So, dude, thanks. Good, good stuff again, J Law. I'm man. I don't think I've been as excited outside of maybe A1 for a race this year. Yeah, I love it. This is going to be a good one. So, if you guys haven't checked out his track yeah, preview, two fifties will be great. Oh, it's going to all be awesome, dude. Go check out his track preview. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with riders meeting to break down whatever goes down. Hopefully, it'll be good. J Law, thanks, buddy. Um, Appreciate you coming on, man. I love your insight, man. You're, you're a you. student of this stuff. I dig it. So, all right, guys, have a good weekend. We'll see you next week. I appreciate week. it. All right, see ya.